We want to thank you for joining us here on 13 News at Noon. I'm Karen Campbell. We are following breaking news. Special Judge Francis Gull has granted a motion to block Richard Allen's defense team from mentioning alleged cult activity in the murders of Abby Williams and Libby German. Now, Judge Gull also blocks the defense from using the names of almost a dozen alternate suspects when Allen stands trial. The judge says the burden is on the defense to show a nexus between alternate suspects suspects, Odinism, and the murders. Allen's attorneys claim the murders of the two girls were part of a ritualistic pagan sacrifice. But Judge Gall says the defense has failed to produce evidence to support their claim. Now, Allen's trial starts October 14th. Of course, we will have more on 13 News starting at 4 o'clock. And breaking news out of Georgia right now as uh, a high school there in Barrow County is on a hard lockdown after shots rang out. We want to take a live look at the scene and show you kind of what's going on there. You see all the vehicles uh, surrounding the school there. That's a huge police presence uh, following the gunfire that's outside of that school. Now, just moments ago, we learned that students were released to parents and guardians. One person was airlifted from that scene and we are working to learn why. Now we will have more on this on air and on WTHR.com. When new at noon, we are working to learn more about a shooting on Indy's near east side. This one happening around 915 this morning on East Washington Street. That's near Willard Park. IMPD tells us they found a person shot when they got to the scene. Now the victim was taken to a hospital in serious condition. 13 News is working to learn their current condition. Now IMPD has not shared any more details on what may have led to that shooting. And just into the newsroom, an IMPD officer has been arrested for child molestation. IMPD Public Affairs released a statement just moments ago, and 35-year-old Kamal Bola is facing preliminary charges for three counts of child molesting as well as public voyeurism. The Hendricks County Sheriff's Office confirmed they arrested him last night around 11 o'clock. He's currently being held without bond. Nabola is a patrol officer with IMPD using online public employee records. IMPD tells us Bola is suspended. Now they also say he is a six year veteran of the department and was recently assigned to the Southwest District. This arrest makes him the fourth IMPD officer arrested for sex crimes this year. Now we are going to keep following this case and let you know of any new developments. And of course we will have more on this starting uh, 13 news at four o'clock. All right, we are giving you now a live look outside. We're talking about temperatures. Uh, you may be wondering, you know, where is summer gone? Where are those 80 degree temperatures and 90 degree temperatures? But <laughs> it, it, it feels comfortable, right? It feels good that yeah. those crisp mornings and it does warm up throughout yeah. the day. Yeah, it'll be nice. Uh, if you want some 80s, we've mm -hmm. got you covered today. If you yeah. want near 90, no. we've got you covered tomorrow. Ah. Ah, okay, and if you'd like happen. a little more mid-October <laughs> and early September air, we have it all. Sunday morning, uh, <laughs> good idea to start digging out some of those sweaters and hoodies because, yeah, we're going to have a little chilly go here as we get into the weekend. We'll tackle that in a little bit. Let's take care of today and as expected already at this hour, equally as warm as yesterday's daytime highs. And we're going to tack on almost another 10 to what you were seeing there. Here in Indy, we're at 76, a southeast wind at five. Karen mentioned it, it's comfortable. Dew points remain in the 40s, so we're not talking terribly muggy. This is not comfortable. If you suffer from uh, pollen, the ragweed is off the charts. And unfortunately, it is going to stay that way. It may get a little bit better on Friday with the upcoming rain, but that's it. Visible satellite showing good dose of sunshine here, and we're expect, expecting temperatures to recover uh, into the mid 80s today. Tomorrow's the hottest of the seven day, and we'll talk about that chillier pattern ahead for the weekend coming up in a few minutes. Yep. Been 31 years since Carmen Hope Van Huss was raped and murdered in Indianapolis. And since that day, her family has wondered who did it. But now a break in that case, a man arrested and charged after advancements in DNA testing and information found in yeah, genealogy databases led investigators to the suspect. Here's our Logan Gay with the latest. 
Andrea and Jimmy, I won't pretend to know what you are feeling today, but I do hope this is the first step in providing what closure the criminal justice system can. Closure that's coming 31 years after 19-year-old Carmen Van Hus was raped and brutally stabbed to death in her North Indianapolis apartment. Anytime you see a case like this, you immediately think of Carmen and Carmen's family and what they've had to deal with over the course of the last 30 years, understanding that they are still grieving the loss of their family member, of their loved one, while the person who we are alleging is ultimately responsible for these acts is walking around and enjoying their freedom. But now, police have arrested the person they believe is responsible for Carmen's murder, Dana Germain Shepard. Today's arrest demonstrates the commitment of our unsolved homicide unit. Carmen's brother was a freshman in high school when she was killed. He says he's grateful to the detectives for not giving up. There's a lot of people that miss Carmen all these years. She had a lot of family, a lot of friends. She had cousins that loved her like sisters. She had an aunt and uncle that loved her like a daughter. Um, she wasn't able to experience her college graduation or have a wedding or any of life's events that she uh, missed out on. Carmen's father died years ago without any answers about his daughter's death. And for my dad to have to find his daughter after what was brutally done to her, Makes this day bittersweet. I wish she was here to see it. Now Carmen's family is hoping the advances in DNA testing will help more people get these kinds of answers they've been waiting for. We have hope that any similar case with DNA can get this same treatment with the genealogy and then uh, everything we have available today. I want all of them to get the same attention and get maybe we can have some more outcomes like this. We're committed to it. In each case, we continue to work independently. If we can find enough evidence, then we'll, we'll seek the funding, we'll find the dollars, and we'll commit to it. And that was our Logan Gay reporting. Police say Shepard was Carmen's neighbor at the time of her murder. He now faces two counts of murder and one count of rape. Now, Shepard is being held in a Missouri jail, awaiting a hearing to determine when he will be brought back to Marion County. Well, this afternoon, Indiana State Police are searching for the suspect who allegedly shot a driver on 465. Investigators tell 13 News this happened yesterday afternoon near Michigan Road. Now, state police say the man drove himself to a nearby uh, restaurant near Meridian and 96th Street and called 911. At last check, that man is expected to be okay, but investigators are still looking for witnesses. So, if you have any helpful information, if you were near Michigan Road, they say between 120 and 140 p.m. yesterday. They want you to call uh, Indiana State Police or Crime Stoppers at 317-262-TIPS. Well, the track here at the Motor Speedway in Indianapolis, of course, is famous for fast cars, but some neighbors in Greenwood tell 13 News that people are taking speedway rules to US 31. Those neighbors are upset about speeding, reckless driving, and even racing. US 31 isn't built for IndyCar, and this isn't a new problem, but people who live nearby say it's hard to avoid. One person even called it a drag strip. Greenwood police tell us they're also frustrated so far this year, officers have conducted 985 directed patrols. Now that's when officers sit and watch traffic in hot spots. They say if you see someone driving dangerously, reach out to police. Well, reckless driving is not the only safety concern on streets around central Indiana. Last month, Marion County saw a staggering 103 pedestrians hit by cars. Seven of those people died. The group Indy Pedestrian Safety Crisis tracks these cases. Eric Holt, who founded the organization, says it's the worst month in, in, in the Indy area since they started recording the numbers two years ago. But it's a problem with no easy solution. We set up a camera yesterday near College and Mass Avenue. Now, the map, of course, shows that it's a dangerous spot for people on foot. In just one hour, we saw distracted drivers and pedestrians. Holt says things have to change to improve safety for everyone. We've seen ebbs and flows over the two years of, of tracking this data. Some we can explain, some we really can't. We need to be looking at those short-term initiatives that we know are successful. The city and community have been working on ways to fix the issue. We've seen tactical urbanism projects and the approval 
of a Vision Zero task force aimed at eliminating traffic fatalities over the next decade. The mayor sent us a statement saying city leaders continue improving infrastructure, but there is more to do. All right, here's something we want you to check out. For the first time in eight years, the Indiana Fever, they're heading to the playoffs. The Fever clinched a spot in the WNBA playoffs on their day off after Chicago and Atlanta lost road games last night. Now, those losses mean Indiana, who is currently sixth in the WNBA standings, can finish no lower than eighth, which is the final spot in the postseason bracket. The playoff appearance will be the Fever's 14th in franchise history and the first since 2016. Good for them.